A few days ago, I was walking along the street when, bam, an earthquake. Now, this is Taiwan, so earthquakes happen all the time. I wasn't really all that worried about it, but I was also on a street corner, and I didn't really know what I was supposed to do, so I thought it would be good to look it up. If you're outside, you should avoid buildings, trees, power lines, and street lights. Pretty much everywhere I looked had one of these. There's the, you know, giant buildings that are behind me. There's the street lights and the trees that are right in front of me. And, you know, then there's the cars that are whizzing down the road. This got me thinking about how we teach people things. Because in one sense, there's nothing really wrong about the government's advice. It's, it's fundamentally correct. You're better off in the middle of a field during an earthquake than you are, you know, under street lights and trees and power lines. But it's also not relevant. It's not matched to the decisions that people actually face when they have an earthquake. Over half of the world's population lives in urban settings. Now, yes, if I am faced with a choice between a bunch of tall buildings and a field, yeah, I'm going to run towards the field. That makes sense. But that's not the situation that most people find themselves in. What does this have to do with teaching? One of the problems I see with a lot of teaching and training programs is that they don't focus on the decisions that students actually make. So take writing as an example. Every student in grade school is introduced to the five paragraph structure. Now, it's what teachers expect students to write. It's what is on the AP exams. But this approach, especially if you stick with it long enough, just avoids confronting the real decisions that writers make. Good writers don't apply pre-made structures to their writing, right? They try to figure out what they want to say at the same time that they're figuring out how to say it. So the form and the content are linked. You can't just stamp everything into a five paragraph structure and expect that it's going to be good. Math education has a similar problem. In a traditional American math curriculum, students are taught to apply formulas to well understood problems. This is a good skill to have, but it's far from the only skill that's important and it avoids a lot of the most important decisions about mathematical thinking. The skill that most matters to students involves applying decisions to real life unstructured math problems, but it's this skill that keeps getting put off year after year after year. Now, when I tutored high school students and college students in math, I saw their, in their homework and their tests, they were just constantly doing these formulaic applications. And they never actually reached the kind of hard, interesting decision-making skills that uh, you actually need when you apply math to real problems. Of course, there are various approaches to teaching mathematics that do emphasize the right decisions. And I put some links to those programs below. My point is just that the effectiveness of teaching materials depends not just on whether they're correct or how they're organized or what visualizations you use. They also depend on whether what you're teaching matches the decisions that students are going to be facing in the future. Now, I suspect that the best place to be outside in an urban setting during an earthquake is underneath a door frame so that you are protected from falling debris. But if you are an earthquake expert, you can let me know in the comments if I'm right about that and maybe give me some other advice on what to do because there are earthquakes happening here like all the time. That's it for this video. See you next time.